now we are going to talk about imaging in the limit of geometrical optics. So at the end of the class, when we talk about diffraction, we'll speak much more technically about imaging. But for now, geometrical optics can actually tell you quite a bit and uh, predict quite a few devices when it comes to imaging. So let's just think for a minute, something we want to image. Well, it's good to start with something that is uh, self-luminous. You don't want to have to think about where did the light come from that scatters off the surface and blah, blah, blah. Let's start with something that is just makes its own light. So we'll start with a candle um, like that. And we're going to image the front surface of this candle. So it'd be nice if it were a little bit bigger. Oh, there we go. There's a, oh, and the right side needs to be curved a little bit. This is the worst candle drawing. There's a wick there. OK, it's a candle, all right? And this thing is giving off light, right? So what we're going to think about is just one little piece of the candle here, one little point of this flame. Say the flame stays still for a minute. One little point of the flame is a point source of light. And when we describe light in terms of electromagnetism, we describe a plane wave, and the plane wave propagates forward. You can also use similar equations to describe a spherical wave. You can have a point source of light. You can solve the wave equation in spherical coordinates, and the light basically goes out as a spherical wave. And when you get really far away, it kind of looks like a plane wave because its curvature goes way down. So that's kind of what we're thinking about here. In geometrical optics, we would say the light rays come out like this in all these different directions. In all directions. And then, remember in uh, electromagnetism, we described a plane wave. It was a plane wave because it had a wave front that was a plane. Well, here we have a similar idea. We can describe this as having a spherical wave front. So if we were to ask ourselves, where is it in phase, we would say on a sphere. So in geometrical optics, we really think of the light just as a line. But the way it comes out of a point, you can think a little bit more like physical optics and think about the wave front. But really, it just means the light comes out in all directions. Okay? So now, this little point um, on the flame is letting out its own spherical wave front. And actually, every point on the flame is sending out a spherical wave front. So this is the object space. This is what is really happening. And in the object space, light is just going out. What we want to do, what we're trying to do when you're imaging, is to capture some of that light that's going out into the universe and bring it back together in a way that it becomes organized again, that it is in a similar pattern that it was when it came off the object. That's kind of what you're doing. So what we want is those same rays to come together again at a point. I'm not getting the right number of them. Those exact same rays come together and make that point. And then if you make another point, another point, another point, you get an image of the candle. And maybe you can see a little bit of the wax part. And the key is um, that the rays come together. And in geometrical optics, they have to be isochronous. Basically, they obey Fermat. I almost said Fermat. They obey Fermat. Okay? What it means is all the rays that come off this point that want to come together and make an image at this point, they have to take the same amount of time. Okay? They'd say, why would they do that? They aren't going to do that. This is object space. Why would they come together in image space and do that? And the answer is because you put an imaging system between them. Right? You put a bunch of stuff in here. Right? Maybe you put a lens like that. Maybe there's an inverse lens over here. Maybe there's a curved mirror over there and a flat mirror here. Whatever it is, you have an optical system that manipulates all these rays. And it has to do two things. It has to make them come together to a point, And they have to do it isochronous for everything to work out. So in geometrical optics, if you design this thing, you will get an image. 
an image meaning a pattern of light similar to what came off the object. And if you put a screen here, that pattern of light will scatter off of a screen and you'll see an image. If it's a real image, there's also another kind. Okay. So that's what we're going to think about is what kind of optics does it take? What shape does it take to create an image? 